Hello, I'm Christine Lehman. Today we're joined by Mike Phipps. Now Mike is a career or has been a career banker for over 38 years. He currently owns and runs his own boutique brokerage consultancy firm, Mike Phipps Finance. Now I'm going to put you on to Mike to have him discuss a little bit on his company. Thanks Christine. Um, the company started five years ago. Um, it's been incredibly successful due to the support of the industry um, and the industry professionals uh, within it. Um, we settle uh, about 150 transactions a year and we have about $600 million under management. Um, interestingly, and we were talking off camera earlier, um, we don't have one single client who's ever missed a payment. That was staggering. Money. Mike was actually introducing the fact that from all his years of experience, currently he has no customer that has missed one repayment. So The, the reason for that is that we are conservative. Um, we don't encourage people to do things which demonstrably will cause them a problem down the track. Um, and again, that's why we like to deal with industry professionals. And again, if you're looking for one of the industry professionals with that sort of experience, Mike's your man. He has his hand on the pulse of the industry consistently, and he's a straight shooter. So when it comes to anything finance, either topping up, uh, not topping up, but getting um, new loans, etc., Mike's your man. Um, Mike, we're talking about, what was it, the introduction or the magic of finance? <laughs> we're cutting most of this off, just so you know. Okay. Yeah, look, the, the, the black art, I suppose, of, uh, of how to get a great deal from a bank without really trying. <laughs> okay. Mike, you wanted to talk about the black art of getting a deal through the banks. Now, tell me more about that. Yeah, so the, the, there's never been more competition um, than there is now among the banks for commercial finance. Mm -hmm. um, that's really uh, because there's not a lot of lending going on or there hasn't been traditionally in the housing market after the GFC. So the banks are really keen to lend for businesses. Um, what we do is create a competitive environment among the banks to make sure our clients get the very best deal. Okay, that's a big change from a few years ago. Uh, it is. Certainly uh, when the GFC hit, the banks didn't want to know. Um, what we found interesting was that pretty much the only going concern business that the banks continued to lend bullishly on were management rights. Mm -hmm. um, and there are some very good reasons for that. Okay, can you give us, give us a few reasons behind that confidence? Sure. Um, so with, with a going concern business, there's risk. Um, and traditionally, there, there's risk um, you know, associated with cash flow, stock, debtors, creditors. Bad debts can be a real issue for, for a business, for a going concern business of any size. Um, management rights simply don't present those credit risks. They're all missing from the business model. Um, the resident manager is the first person to be paid every month. They're paid a salary um, and they have an exclusive right to operate the business within the building. Um, the banks simply love the business model, particularly in Queensland, but we certainly have clients in all states and territories. Okay, well, listen hard if you're thinking about buying more or buying several. Okay, you've seen the ups and downs of the industry. How do you compare the industry today or the finance industry today with that of 2008? Sure. Um, well, for those of you um, who recall, or haven't had their psychologist blanket out yet, 2008 was really the year that crystallised the outcomes of the GFC, the global financial crisis. Um, so uh, certainly um, assets within all asset classes um, took a bit of a beating after the GFC mm -hmm. and management rights were no different. Multiples fell, um, but people didn't, didn't go broke. Um, so they were still making the same money they made when they bought the business. Mm -hmm. um, all that really happened was that they didn't want to sell quite as quickly because they couldn't get their money back straight away. No different to the housing market. What we're seeing now, uh, certainly in 2013, 2014, is a huge amount of confidence coming back into the market and multiples are now pretty much where they were pre-GFC. Right. So we're, we're pretty much back where we were. Okay, so basically the people who've been holding out for so long, waiting for the multipliers to come up, for their business or industry to get better, you're saying now is the, the opportunity is presenting itself? I think so. Um, and, and certainly we're seeing that on both sides of the equation. We're seeing vendors as motivated as they've been for some time to sell, and in fact lots of them having their numbers prepared right now, but we're also seeing a significant influx of cashed up buyers coming into the market. Mm -hmm. um, the traditional buyer base, which is, is, is Australian buyers, um, are now also being bolstered by people from New Zealand. Um, we're seeing a significant increase in the number of people from the United Kingdom buying into the industry, and certainly uh, the Chinese business community has been a significant contributor. Um, the, the feeling of confidence in the market now is as good as I've seen it since I've, I've joined the industry. And that's a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good to hear. Really good to hear. We've heard that the government is actually cracking down on financial services. How's that going to be affecting interest rates and, and your business right now? Sure. 
So there is a review of, uh, of the banking sector going on right now, headed up by a guy called David Murray, who was, uh, ran Commonwealth Bank back in the day. Um, we think there will be a tightening of credit policy, particularly in the house loan market that will come out of that, that review. Um, and we also think that there'll be some capital adequacy requirements for the banks that they don't traditionally have, which could see interest rates lift a little bit, but not much. Um, again, management rights as a business and as a credit risk is so low in the overall scheme of things that we don't think the review will necessarily impact the industry. It's more likely to impact others. Mm -hmm. And for people who've been in the industry a long time, the most important thing is that the banks continue to be confident so that your buyer always can go to a bank or mm -hmm. better still come to us um, and borrow money to buy the asset. That's what keeps the asset value up. Um, in terms of interest rates more broadly, um, the Reserve Bank cash rates driven by pretty much inflation um, yes. and consumer demand. Um, there doesn't seem to me to be anything out there at the moment that suggests that rates are going anywhere other than flat. Oh, that's good to hear. Okay, I've heard it said though that um, during the, the 2008, well, what was the peak period? Was it 2000, prior to 2008? Everybody was buying? Certainly 05, 06 was, was a particularly hot market. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, like everybody else, uh, I'm a great economist in hindsight. Uh, I guess we should have seen a little bit of overheating in the market coming. Um, but again, if you look at market adjustment in the sector, it was pretty mild compared to some of the housing market. And certainly if you compare it to assets like hotels, mm -hmm. um, your traditional pub asset, um, they absolutely tanked after the GFC, whereas management rights did comparably well. Okay. Are the banks feeding a lot of comfort though? Because now the buyers aren't just buying haphazardly, they're actually aligning themselves with industry experts like accountants and solicitors and being educated or getting very educated prior to purchasing. Um, certainly that's the case, Christine. What, what we're observing is that buyers are more or, or better researched um, than they have been in the past. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing that banks are obviously interested in is whether or not a person who hasn't operated an asset like this before will go. And the more that they surround themselves with industry professionals and mentors, um, the better when we go to talk to a bank on their behalf. Um, but yeah, certainly um, buyers are as educated as they have ever been, in my opinion. Mike, what lessons have we learned coming through the GFC? Um, Christine, certainly um, before the GFC, the market got got very hot in my opinion um, and I think there was almost um, a lemming like mentality among some buyers where they, they rushed into purchases because everybody else was uh, a bit like a stock market run. Um, I think certainly uh, the industry has de-risked itself uh, from that occurring again purely because of the amount of due diligence that takes place from the lessons that have been learned. Um, uh, it's not, a, it's not a totally risk-free business model. There will always be someone who will make a, a spur-of-the-moment decision and be proved wrong. Mm -hmm. But the reality is 99% of the transactions are, are, have very stringent due diligence now um, and people are a little more cautious. Yes, I've experienced all that due diligence and your advice through the whole situation. <laughs> Mike, how do you feel the valuers are acting now that prices are coming up? Are they starting to support your numbers as well? Um, they certainly are, Christine. Um, Valuers have a tough job um, when the market's going down uh, or decreasing, which can happen sometimes in, in any sort of asset. They have to follow that trend. Equally, they have to follow a trend when the market's improving. Um, and their job is not to get in front of the trend, but to interpret it. Um, certainly a year ago, when, when multiples really started to firm up, we saw valuers um, perhaps not supporting that trend. That's changed. Um, valuers are now really supporting the trend. Um, it's interesting to note that probably 50% of the transactions that we do, the banks don't even value the management rights business. Um, they have enough data, and certainly we have enough data, to support the transaction price. Um, so it's only the very large transactions that ever, ever even get to valuation. Okay, now on value, a sticking point with us very often, standard modules. Sure. Um, and certainly uh, the basis of some of the great urban myths um, yes. that, that float about. Um, uh, Standard module buildings are those which are regulated to a maximum of 10 years in the agreements. Um, and certainly there are banks um, who, uh, who want to then write the finance over 10 years, or indeed less, um, they will discount the term. I mean, those buildings as a result don't stack up for those lenders. Um, but the harsh reality is these businesses include a piece of real estate. That piece of real estate is not going to go away um, in the event, in the very unlikely event, um, that the agreements would ever be terminated. Um, by the way, we have never had a client have agreements terminated ever. 
Um, typically, the buyer simply uh, does the right thing, builds a relationship with the body corporate and continues to have the agreements topped up um, at no fee, by the way. It's something that's done for free. Um, so that they've always got somewhere between eight and ten years. Mm -hmm. But um, to put the urban myth to bed, um, we are having absolutely no difficulty funding standard module buildings. And when you say you're funding standard module buildings, is there a difference in terms of interest or interest and principal? Yeah, it's a good point, Christine. Um, uh, interest only versus principal and interest periods on, on the different modules. Um, certainly, let's not make any mistake. A standard module building has a proven cash flow life of 10 years. Yes. Um, the other module is longer. Um, so typically we can get interest only for our clients and we can get interest only for a long period of time providing the agreements continually get topped up. And in fact, I have a client with 10 year agreements who's into his fifth year of interest only um, because he's astute enough to go to the, uh, the body corporate every year and simply keep his agreements topped up. Um, it really is just a common sense matter um, and certainly there are you know, two of the major banks and two of the regional banks that just simply don't have a problem. Well, thank you for putting that urban myth to bed. Mike, for those people who've been in the industry for so long and have basically let the same thing roll on and on and on all these years, do you have any advice for them? Sure. Um, look, all things being equal, the best thing anybody can do is try to build a great relationship with their bank mm -hmm. um, and try and stay there. Um, and in fact, finance brokers who encourage people to move banks are generally doing it because they can make some money out of it, not because it's great for the client. Um, my advice is simply to keep an eye on market, on the market, on what's happening and make sure that you sit down with your bank manager and, and have a chat about it. One of the things that we do for both our existing clients and for new clients is to just sit down with them and their bank and assist them to negotiate a package that's ongoing and very competitive. Um, and obviously we're getting new quotes from banks all the time. So we can see what banks are offering their new customers. Our view is they should be offering their current customers at least as good a deal. They often don't. Yes. Um, they often will try to encourage new business with great offers while ignoring their existing clients. And part of our job is to make sure that that doesn't happen. So basically you have to be a squeaky wheel. I think that's a great idea. Um, I think it's a great idea to build trust and rapport with your bank. Um, I don't think it's a great idea to move between banks, but certainly if, if for one reason or another um, a lender decides that they want to play hardball with a client, um, we can certainly help them move banks um, at very minimal cost. Okay, so relationships still at the forefront. Relationships with your banker, with your finance broker. Absolutely. Um, it, it's, it's an interesting point because um, our clients love us because we don't go anywhere. Um, we understand them. They don't have to tell their story to us every time they call us, whereas you know, they do have a degree of frustration with what can be a revolving door at their bank where they really have to build rapport with a new manager every six or 12 months. Um, a lot of our clients don't like that, um, but they get continuity with our business. We've seen a fairly heated market happening right now. What sort of uh, market segments are you seeing a lot of interest come in? I guess the first the first observation would be, I'm not sure the market's heated as such because heated tends to suggest um, a bubble and bubbles do an interesting thing once they get too big. I think all that's happening is that a growing number of people are coming to appreciate what a low risk, high return business model this is. Um, uh, you know, it certainly after the GFC, a lot of people got burnt in other sorts of businesses and it's made them focus on well, where, where are the low risk going concern business models. Um, and and that, that's my opinion, but it doesn't mean much. That's the opinion of the banks yes. and that's really important. After the GFC, there was a, there was a flight to what people saw as, as low risk management rights um, and certainly the permanent occupancy based businesses are at the lower risk end, yes. albeit they're also at the end of the market where there's not a hell of a lot you can do to improve the profitability. It, it is what it is. Um, at the other end of the market, the short term service department models in the cities, CBD Fringe, mm -hmm. Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, um, very, very strong returns. Mm -hmm. They've continued to be strong um, and you know, those are significant businesses. Um, in the middle are the holiday buildings, which I guess took the longest to recover from, from the GFC. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't seen demand in the holiday sector this good for 20 years. Um, our clients are telling us that their November bookings for 2014 are the best they've seen. Mm -hmm. And you know, those in the holiday market will know that you know, November tends to be a bit of a dead month before the run into Christmas. Um, but we are seeing spectacular forward booking data coming out of our clients right now. That's great to hear. You sound fairly upbeat. Um, we're having a ball. You're having a ball and if we had a crystal ball and you could like judge what was going to happen in the future? 
Sure. I, I think multiples are probably unsustainable past six times to 6.2 times for the really big net profits. Um, and that's just an outcome of return on equity. If you're going to buy one of these businesses, you're going to put some of your own money in. And the higher the multiples go, the less the return on that money becomes and therefore other investments start to pop onto the radar. So I think we'll see demand stay strong. I think we'll see multiples start to level out in 2015. I think we'll see cost of capital uh, and debt extremely low for the next five years. I mean, the average cost of finance to buy management rights is sub 6%, and the average returns are 12 to 14. Mm -hmm. If your cost of debt is half the return that you're getting the asset on, um, that's a pretty good model. That's a mighty fine return. It is. <laughs> Mike, thanks so much. I really appreciate that. And for all those of you who are watching, um, if you're looking to either investigate your own current loan or you're looking to buy into another one, it takes only a phone call to get Mike over there. He's very approachable and very knowledgeable. I fully endorse him and suggest you give him a call. Mike, thanks so much for coming. Thank really you. appreciate that. Thank you, Christine. Thank you.